Sss drunk. If you were to throw out a guess as to which franchise or superhero or fictional character has the most video games tied to their name, you might guess Batman or Mickey Mouse or the Ninja Turtles, but if you're talking video games that stayed in Japan, then the answer is probably one of the three superheroes from the Compati Hero series. On the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom alone, there's 15 games starring the trio of Kamen Rider, Gundam, and Ultraman, and in case you weren't aware, some of them are actually really good. Games like Great Battle 4 and Battle Dodgeball, just to name a couple, are really fun playthroughs that don't require a translation to play. These games look fun, right? Now, compare that to this. It's Ultraman Towards the Future, released for Super Nintendo in North America in October 1991, and it's a great example of a game where all it takes is just looking at it for five seconds and thinking, wow, that looks like it really sucks, and you'd be 100% correct. It's the first one-on-one -on -one fighting game for the Super Nintendo, and it was released right around the same time Street Fighter II first showed up in arcades. So yeah, in case it's not obvious enough from the footage, Ultraman Towards the Future is a very early Super Nintendo release, and in fact it's one of the first third-party releases available to rent or buy, and it was the first time I can remember thinking as a kid at the time that there's absolutely no way I will ever rent this game. Not too long after we got our Super Nintendo, we got the Super NES Player's Guide, self-described as the only official guide to the Super NES straight from the pros at Nintendo. The guide does a tremendous job laying out tons of information on all sorts of games like UN Squadron, Final Fight, East 3, Wanderers from East, and on and on. But take a look at what the guide says about Ultraman. There's a total of eight sentences here, written with the enthusiasm of someone filling out their taxes. Even as a 10-year-old, I had the sense that, wow, even Nintendo knows this game sucks. I mean, even the write-up for Bill Beer's Combat Basketball gave me some insight. But yeah, I don't want to slag the good name of Ultraman too much, but this game had no chance from day one. I did not know who Ultraman was as a kid, and this game was not about to make me care. Like I said, it's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game made before fighting games really took off, so it's really clunky, really slow, really limited, and really bad. All you got here is a single-player campaign. You fire up the game, you press start, and you're thrown into a battle against Gudis, a guy in a monster costume. I mean, an alien looking to infect the Earth with a deadly virus. It's B to punch, A to kick, X to jump, and Y uses one of your special weapons, of which there's four, and you scroll through them with the L and R buttons. The gimmick here is the secondary meter you see in the middle of the screen there. You have to do enough damage to each monster and raise that meter to level 4 while cutting your opponent's energy down to the point that the word finish pops up. Yes, this game has finishers! Well, it's got one finisher, you just saw it right there. The thing is, when you take damage, that secondary meter goes down, so you have to sit here forever punching and kicking just to get it to the point where you can finish off this monster and move on with the game. You have to do this nine times, and every single battle is the same. You get your opponent down to zero health, but your secondary meter still needs to fill up so you can finish them off. So you punch and kick and punch and kick, and then the monster gets in one quick cheap shot right as you're about to finish them, and you gotta start all over. Again, you gotta do this nine times. That's the entire game. I will say this, there's enough evidence here to show that the dev team kinda sorta cared about the finished product, like you can hold up on the d-pad while attacking to expand your plethora of moves to include an uppercut, a spin kick, and a shield, and you can also roll or backflip out of harm's way, so at least this game isn't as bad as Pit Fighter. But that's like being sick with the flu and saying, hey, at least you don't have inoperable cancer, it's really not gonna cheer you up much. So yeah, Ultraman Towards the Future is easily one of the worst games on the Super Nintendo. The gameplay is incredibly boring and limited, even for a game made in 1991. There's no multiplayer, there's no other game modes at all, and the controls are slow to the point that it feels like it was done on purpose to make each fight seem as cheap as possible. It feels like it's going for that arcade type of cheapness, where you take damage out of nowhere for no reason other than to make you cough up some more quarters. Kinda stupid that they'd go for that approach in a home console game. Oh hey, wait a second, this actually was an arcade game first, hey, look at that. The Super Nintendo port is actually pretty accurate, so good job by the dev team, making sure all the flaws of the original arcade game really shine through on the home console version. I guess the only real positive I can glean from this game is that it seems like a good representation of Ultraman and all his friends. I will say, if you're a grade school kid of a certain age that really loved Ultraman and loved all the monsters and the lore and all that, then maybe you got like, I don't know, 10 minutes of enjoyment out of this one at the time. Otherwise, I don't know what we're doing here. It's not like there was this huge demand for Ultraman in North America during the early 90s, so I don't have any insight as to why this game was one of the first releases available for the Super Nintendo, and I can't offer any reason to play this today either. So you're going to want to avoid this game any way you can. And that is all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.